All right, this is Grade 2, Module 5, Lesson 7. And in this lesson, really, students are going to be uh, practicing or sharing a whole variety of solution strategies for adding and subtracting. And this lesson really points out the point of Common Core, or the spirit of Common Core, which is we're not just going to teach students how to solve a problem with rote algorithm and rote memorization. Instead, we're going to teach for understanding through a variety of solution strategies so that students have a, a really good chance at actually understanding the math rather than simply memorizing. So let's get going. So this problem it says solve each problem with a written strategy such as, and then we've got a, a variety of methods here. Tape diagram and number bond, the arrow wave, vertical form, which is kind of like the traditional algorithm, and then chips on a place value chart. So we've got a variety of ways to solve that, that we can choose from. And parents and teachers, your job is to kind of expose students to all of these methods, maybe have all these things up on a poster, so that students can look at the wall and say, oh, I want to use the tape diagram, you know, as a memory device, uh, scaffolding, so that students can remember all the things they've learned and then apply them as needed. Um, I'm going to show on this problem the place value chart because we're going to do these other methods in later slides on this video. So how would I solve this problem using the place value chart? Well, first off, remember what the place value chart looks like. The place value chart, in this case, it's going to have three place values, three columns. It's the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. And your students may be using the literal chips that have like a hundred or the ten or the one written in them, or they may be using the dots. I'm going to model it using the dots. And I'm going to start with this 500 and modeling 500 and 500 is going to look like this one two three four five now there's our model for 500 and now it says what do we need to add to it so that we end up with eight in the hundreds column one in the tens column and two in the in the ones column. <clears throat> so, if we think about that, we can see that, all right, well, we have five right now. We need eight. So that means we need three more. One, two, three. In the tens column, we have nothing. We need one. So that means we are going to add one in the tens column. And then lastly, we have nothing in the ones column, but we need to end up with two. So that means we're going to add two. And so what did we end up adding to the um, problem? Well, we ended up adding 300, 110, and two ones. So 312. So that's how I would solve this problem using the place value chart. Is this the only answer possible? Yes. Is this the only way that we could solve the problem? No way. There's, we could have probably used any of these methods to get the right answer of 312. So, this is the right answer. It's the only right answer. But there's a variety of different ways we could have chosen to get there. All right, um, this is problem D. And same idea, we, we have a bunch of different methods that we can choose from. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the tape diagram on this one. And we're going to remember that for subtraction, we're gonna, we can model our two numbers. And I can model this as 230, and I can model this as 190. And that our answer to this subtraction problem is this gap right here. But subtracting 230 minus 190 is a little tricky. And so I'm going to add on 
to each of these tape diagrams to make the problem a little bit more friendly. And I'm going to add on 10 to each of those. And what that does is that changes the problem to 240 minus 200. So we still have the same gap. We didn't change the answer. We just changed what the problem looks like and made it more friendly. So instead of thinking about 230 minus 190, I'm now going to think of 240 minus 200. And that answer is 40. So this gap right here is equal to 40. And that would equal to 40 whether we had these tens here, and it, the problem was 230 minus 190, or if we have the tens there, and the problem is 240 uh, minus 200. So this set of problems specifically say use the arrow method, so let's do that. So we're going to start with 710, and I'm going to just march through this a place value at a time. So it says start with 710, and we're going to subtract 300. Well, that gives us 410. Now, it says we can start working on subtracting that 50. But right now, we only have 10. So I'm going to first subtract just 10. And that gives us 400. But we haven't finished our subtraction because we have 40 more to subtract. So 400 minus 40 gives us 360. So our answer is 360. Now how do we know that we actually subtracted 350? Well, here's 300, here's 10, here's 40. 40 and 10 is 50 plus the 300. So all of this means we have indeed subtracted 350. We just did it in three little broken parts. So our answer is 360. If we wanted to, we could check by adding, but um, the problem doesn't specifically say for us to do that, so let's not. So this problem uh, is asking students to solve this problem in two different ways. Parents, teachers, um, the whole theme of this is to develop students' understanding of mathematics without just rote memorization. If students are struggling with two different strategies, and you as the parent or you as the teacher are certain that the student at least understands the one method that he or she is using, great. Don't fight too much of a battle here. Uh, the idea is to just keep talking about all the creativeness that can go into how to solve a math problem. So uh, I think one way I would do this is I think I would use the number bond. Because I would say, hmm, this guy is really close to a landmark number. It's really close to 300. It just needs five more. So I'm going to use a number bond, and I'm going to decompose 667 into 662 plus 5. And now, these guys can add together to equal 300. So we now end up with 662 plus 300, and that equals 962. Another way to solve this problem would be using um, number disks and place value. And so I'm going to do it down here because I want extra room. So here's our hundreds, here's our tens, here's our ones. I'm going to begin by modeling 667, and I'll do that in blue. So 600, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven. So there's 667. And now I'm going to model uh, 295. So let's do that in red. So 295 would look like this. Two in the hundreds. 90 would be 9 in the tens column. And then 5 would be 5 in the ones column. All right, so I've modeled. And you can see here's the 667 plus 295. And now we are going to do some regrouping because we can see that we can cash in some of our, our dots. Because whenever there's 10 uh, dots in one column, you can cash it in for one dot in the next column over. So let's look at our ones right here. So we have seven dots plus five dots. So that means we have 12 dots. So we can definitely take, let's see, how would I do this? Oh, I could take these 10 dots right here. And if you're not sure that that's 10, uh, take a moment to pause the video and count. But there's 10 dots, so we can cache those 10 ones for one 10. And then in the same way, now that we have we have a whole bunch of tens in our tens column. So we need uh, to circle ten of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so here are ten tens. So these ten tens can be cashed in for one hundred. All right, and I think we have, do we have, well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope, not quite enough to cash in another one. So now we've done cashing everything in and exchanging everything. And so now we have our results. So how many ones do we have left over? Well, we used to have a bunch, but now we only have two left over. And then how many tens do we have? Well, we used to have a bunch, but now we only have one, two, three, four, five, six left over. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. And then how many one hundreds do we have? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine. So our answer is 962, and that's exactly what we had up here all along. So I'm going to put up here 600. 667 plus 295 equals 962, and we did that using the place value chart. And that wraps up Grade 2, Module 5, Lesson 7, where students are using a variety of solution strategies for addition and subtraction.